welcome to another music review. Uh, today I'm going to review the album called Manassas, uh, which was released in 1972. It was a double album set, and uh, it was really the creation of one Stephen Stills. Now, before we get into the album, uh, I'd like to just uh, do a little bit of background on Stephen Stills. He was born in Dallas in 1945. He's uh, 78 years of age now. He de developed an interest in blues and folk and also Latin music after time spent living in Costa Rica, Panama and Florida as a youth. His first band were called o or Go Go Singers, <coughs> where he met Richie Fury. In 1965, Steele's toured Canada with a band called The Company and he ran into one Neil Young. I guess the story's evolving here. In 1966, uh, in L.A., Stills, Young and Fury reunited and formed Buffalo Springfield, whereupon their musical style saw the amalgam of folk, country, psychedelia and rock with those distinctive lead guitars, twin lead guitars. And their debut was released, sold pretty well. And following uh, that, uh, the release of what it's... For what it's worth, the single from the album jettisoned them into the limelight. Uh, that particular single was written by Stills and it made the top 10. A second album followed titled Again with more success. Do you know Bluebird? Oh, well, it's a great song and again written by Stills. However, in 1967, disputes with management plus uh, Bruce Palmer's uh, repeated record of arrest for drug possession, he was the bassist in Buffalo Springfield, led to his deportation from, get it right, his deportation from the US in January 1967. Continue. Palmer was replaced in the band by a rotating group of bassists, but shortly thereafter, you left, sorry, Young left the group due to tensions with Stills. And Buffalo Springfield played its most prominent concert at the Monterey Pop Festival in June 1967, with Doug Hastings and David Crosby filling in for Young. In late May, Palmer returned to the US disguised as a businessman. Young eventually returned as well. However, the group had lost trust in Palmer and continued to rely on session players despite his return. Palmer continued to rake up a lengthy arrest record, which included another drug possession bust and driving without a license. January 68, he was removed from the band and officially replaced by Jim Messina and deported again in March. After embarking on a tour opening for the Beach Boys, Buffalo Springfield disbanded on May the 5th, 1968. Following the disbandment of this band, hugely successful, of course, uh, it led to Stills joining forces with David Crosby, who was, of course, an ex-bird, and Graham Nash, who previously uh, was known to uh, UK fans for his work in the Hollies. So Crosby, Stills and Nash were formed, and their debut album released in 1969. Two smash top 40 single hits, Marrakesh Express, that was Nash's baby, and Sweet Judy Blue Eyes, which was written by Stills. Uh, Crosby, Stills and Nash built on the rock roots using folk blows and even jazz, without specifically sounding like mere duplication. Not only did they blend their voices, the three meshed their differing strengths. David Crosby for social commentary and atmospheric mood pieces, Steve Stills for his diverse musical skills and for folding folk and country elements subtly into complex rock structures, and of course Graham Mash for his radio-friendly pop melodies to create an amalgam of broad appeal. Stills dominated the recording session of the album, however. Crosby and Nash played guitar on their own sounds, songs, while drummer Dallas Taylor played on most tracks except for drummer Jim Gordon on one. Stills played all the bass, organ and lead guitar parts on the album, as well as acoustic guitar on his own songs. The other guys won't be offended when I say that one was my baby, and I kind of had the tracks in my head, Steve Stills said in interview. Deja Vu followed, 
with the addition of one Neil Young, who had joined the trio for a promotional tour in late 69. And they all played together at the famous Woodstock Festival. The album, The Deja Vu, was a monster hit. The group's second tour, which produced the live double album Four Way Street in 1971, was fraught with arguments between Young and Taylor, which resulted in Taylor being replaced by Johnny Barbato on drums. And there were also lots of tensions with Steels, which resulted in his being temporarily dismissed from this band. At the end of the tour, they disbanded. At this time, all four members had indulged in making solo records, and on Still's debut solo, he has both Eric Clapton and one Jimi Hendrix guesting on the tracks Go Back Down and Old Times, Good Times, respectively. A second solo by Still's followed in June 1971. And later that year, Still's embarked on his first solo US tour with an eight-piece band, including, including the Memphis uh, Horns in which he sold out Madison Square Gardens and morphed into what became known as Manassas when Stills joined up with expert Chris Hillman. The debut double album and a world tour as Manassas uh, followed. So let's get to the album in detail, just called Manassas. Uh, well, it's perhaps the grandest, most ab ambitious project ever undertaken by Stills. Uh, and I don't just mean the enormous size of his backing band. An indispensable acquisition for everybody who loves his rock, tame, inoffensive, introspective and emotional, but also sincere, passionate and far from cheesy or generic. The four sides in question cover each and every aspect of Roots rock. Acoustic blues, electric blues, country, country rock, folk and folk rock. Even bluegrass and Latin. Cuban bluegrass manages to combine both. In this way, this is an indispensable, indispensable acquisition for everybody who loves his rock tame, ineffective, introspective and emotional. I've said that once before. So uh, apologies uh, to you who may be thinking I'm reading this. Well, of course I'm reading it. But so what? Uh, you don't know about this band and uh, the material that I've obtained is very succinct. It's the album, an amazing full palette of sounds that require frequent listeners to appreciate how good this record is. And I'm now going to go through the four sides. They were all given names. And so let's get started through this double album side by side. I will, of course, uh, on occasion, uh, jump in with some lyric. Uh, not many tracks, I have to say because uh, Stills' lyrics are not exactly uh, difficult to interpret and they tend to be dominated by uh, songs about love and relationships. But anyway, let's get started. Side A is called The Raven. I'm not quite sure why it was called The Raven, but uh, it's an amalgam of songs that are joined together. They segue together. And it's absolutely fantastic. Songs of Love starts us off with a wonderful sleazy beat with guitars bristling through the stereo mix up front and back. It stinks of class. How many scintillating guitars are on here? I'll, I beg to uh, differ. And then there's the smooth, silky vo vocals from the boss, Stills. I love that chunky organ as well by Harris that segues into the next songs, Rock and Roll Crazies and Cuban, Cuban Bluegrass. Crazies is a lovely Cuban steel drum that allows the Latino beat to glide over your listening. The wah-wah creeps into the guitar amalgam and then it winds up for this crisp, accelerated Latino beat. You can smell the salts of Cuban bluegrass. It sure is. Mesmerizing, mesmerizing piano and maracas float and segue into the next song, Jet Set Sigh. Double lead guitars here for this hot blues. The guitar playing is awesome. Uh, mixing with a touch of harmonica and Samuel's bass. Wow. Steel's guitar is up with the elite. The uh, transition into any way is a piece of magical enterprise. Lyric 
here's a bit of a taste of the lyric about uh, groupies, posers, and maybe girls who lose their way. I'm jet set psy lyrics. If you do grow when you must know, when you get so jive, you're only half alive. Show me right now that you know how. You can stand up, look in a mirror, and sigh. Get your feet wet, run with the jet set. He's a good girl, go around the world. But the longer it goes on, the harder you hang on till you stand up, look in a mirror and sigh. Trying to be cool, you just be the fool. Let it be known you ain't full groomed. It's all right, don't put up such a fight. You can stand up, look in a mirror and sigh. Yep. Anyways, the next song, Funky It Sure Is, not uh, and the standout bass uh, echoes through the speakers. It's laid back blues rock, a picture of precision, and it completes an action packed first side with Hillman adding some uh, vocals in tandem. It's a knockout from first note to last, and then the finale to side one, both of us bound to lose. More restrained, but definitely not a reduction in quality. Hillman's more up front on vocals, and then there's the mega Latino percussive chaos that takes us to the finish. Speeds the guitars rip up with Lala's especially mobile on the percussion with a crescendo of noise. The second side is called The Wilderness and it's very much country uh, influenced uh, American Americana style. Uh, possibly the side that I'm least in love with. But having said that, I've grown more and more into this uh, type of music as I've aged. It kicks off with Fallen Angel with a frantic violin by Berlin mixed with cowboy style guitar and Harvey lead vocals. Jesus gave love away for free, touches on a religion. It's a country ballad with haunting vocals and backing vocals. In the mix is some lovely pedal steel guitar from Perkins, which is a highlight. The acoustic guitars are a turdy backbone and Stephen's lead vocals ideally suited to the southern drawl. As I say, not a great fan of country, but I love this. Colorado's next. Much quicker tempo. The band is smooth and fully locked into the melody. Perkins again up front with his steel guitar and the piano touches are welcomed. So begins the task is the next song. Gentle rhythm weaves itself over your receptors. Beautiful harmonies, sad tale adapting to loss. The instrumentation weaves together at the outro with panache. And then we go on to Hide It So Deep. There's a slow violin-led country ballad here. Great mandolin by Hillman and more impressive piano with violin up front with the pedal steel guitar. And then we close out with Don't Look At My Shadow, a typical country hoedown. Just feel that bar uh, beneath your feet. Knees up and dance with maximum energy. I'd see then, this is called Consider. It's probably best described as deeply introspective. Opens up with It Doesn't Matter. It's got a troublous mind worrying melody. The guitars, including pedal steel, melt together with that infectious vocal harmony. And then to probably another standout, uh, Johnny's Garden. Steve sings about finding himself an earthly paradise to stay. There's a place I can get to where I'm safe from the city blues and it's green and it's quiet. Only trouble was I had to buy it. Hmm. <laughs> Very apt. And the refrain, the one that goes, I'll do anything I've got to do, cut my hair and shine my shoes. And keep on singing the blues if I can stay here in Johnny's garden. This moves me to tears when I listen to this. Uh, it's more effective than anything else on this record. Somehow, Steve manages to grasp the very essence of timeless cascades of melancholic blues uh, and vocals, uh, atmospheric of it, as always. Uh, lyrically, uh, recommending, of course, the tranquil, clean uh, environments, and I'm gonna I'm gonna have a go at this uh, 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 lyric uh, for your pleasure. Uh, I read some of it, but I'm gonna do the whole lot now because I love it. There's a place I can get to where I'm safe from the city blues, and it's green and it's quiet. Only trouble was I had to buy it, 
and I'll do anything I got to do, cut my hair and shine my shoes and keep on singing the blues if I can stay here in Johnny's garden as the swift bird flies over the grasses, dipping now and then to take his breakfast. Thus I come and go and I travel and I can watch that bird and unravel and I'll do anything I've got to do, cut my hair and shine my shoes and keep on singing the blues if I can stay here in Johnny's garden with this love, sorry, with this love and his <laughs> caring. He puts his life into beauty sharing and his children are his flowers there to give us peace in quiet hours and I'll do anything I've got to do, cut my hair and shine my shoes and keep on singing the blues if I can stay here in Johnny's garden. Sorry about that uh, error in the middle. I was trying to move the keyboard up to uh, so I could read the words. Move on to the next track on side three, Bound to Fall. It's very Crosby, Stills, Nash like with awesome acoustic guitars that are awash amidst the choral vocals. How Far's Next? It's got some chunky acoustic and electric guitar mixes with Steve out front captivating the listeners with his gorgeous melody. Then another standout, Move Around. Steve complains about the uselessness of life, which is being spent in moving around. The lyrics are way too reminiscent of anti-positivist positivist philosophy, but can't really say anything about the gorgeous harmonies on the chorus, which are underpinned by a beautiful synth pattern, atmospherically hypnotic, possibly the only track that I recall with synthesizers. And then it closes out with Love Gangster, The Love Gangster, a wonderful funky guitar circus. The percussion stamps itself all through the track with wah-wah guitar soothingly uh, uh, swaying side by side with Steele's earthy lead vocals and a usual array of harmony vocals to help the melody swing. So that's side three, very strong. Side four there, then it's called Rock and Roll is Here to Stay and I'd uh, uh, concur with that. It starts out with What to Do. It's got a yokel-like vocal with the keyboards leading the riff an exquisite acoustic guitar and steel guitar from Perkins makes uh, adds to that honky piano from Harris and the fiddle peering through the rhythm at the back end. Wonderful stuff as we end up in a country wake bar. Right now is next. Got an up-tempo organ guitar driven style. This has a great rhythm and Steele's guitar solo is mesmerizing as a highlight with harmony vocals uh, which are pretty solid. Now on to the next track, uh, The Treasure, and uh, this is one that I absolutely adore. Uh, I was lucky enough to catch a, a video of them playing this live on uh, a 60s show uh, called uh, Beat, the Beat, Beat Club, uh, that's right which was an excellent uh, German show that features in the late 60s. And so you got to see all these great bands in a show. It was uh, the person who um, presented the show was a young German woman who spoke mostly in English. But they also had some uh, English DJs chipping in uh, to help her out. So to the treasure then. It segues in from right now, and this is a standout amongst standout tracks that litter the whole album. It feels a little bit like a jam. It's a terrific song, slightly reminiscent of Crosby, Still, Nash and Young's take on Woodstock. Maybe because Steve's passionate vocals and the band harmonies interchange with each other in much the same way. Again, Steele's guitar work is impressive. And note a terrific change of pace midway through as the band get quicker, tighter and as one. It's masterful and I have played this track continuously in the last 50 years. Also note Dallas Taylor's drumming, which is absolutely brilliant. Finally come to the end now and the final track uh, caught me by surprise the first time I listened to it, but it really puts it all into perspective. It's called Blues Mound and it's uh, dedicated to Jimmy the Fox, uh, a.k.a. Jimi Hendrix, 
uh, our, our Blind Owl Wilson, uh, nicknamed the Owl, and Sky Dog, Dwayne Orman. All of these three amazing guitar players had perished and Stills wanted to uh, do a song uh, dedicated to them. Uh, it's one of the simplest and most effective acoustic blues tracks. Steve then seems to bend the strings on his guitar as if his very life depended on it. And the song almost gives the effect of bleeding on you until the very last note where he picks the string so hard it almost breaks. It also reminded me very much of Belly Button Window by Hendrix uh, that appeared on uh, The Cry of Love. And of course, Jimmy was on his Stills' his first solo uh, a few years earlier. Uh, the lyrics, which I'm going to read now, describe his grief at the loss of these three giants. Blues man, play your hand. Do it right. Come on strong. Don't stay too long. Running wild. Singing child, powdered sound. Push you hard, looking down to get down. Such a waste. You left such a space. I shared your dreams. I felt your heart. Did I hear you scream, running scared? You run everywhere, could not choose. Where to hide, play the blues. Played it mad, played it sad. Blues is pain, the way men cry. Like tired rain, blues is mean. The real thing, three good men, I knew well. Never see it again. Yeah, it's pretty moving, isn't it? And so that completes my review of Manassas, the double album uh, released in 1972. If you've never heard this gem, you are sadly missing out. Try and get to hear it on Spotify or wherever you listen to digital music. Better still, buy the double album on vinyl. <laughs>